So we created the market now. We couldn't go to the centers, the centers. We said, now you come to us and we will now deliver the message in the guise of entertainment. So they come and we explain to them. See the groups. First thing we do as they come, they say, please take off your shoes. And when we say, please take off your shoes, we know that we are trying, we are creating a type of inconvenience for these people. Because it's not a very easy thing in the middle of the day, any time taking off the shoes. You know, if Islam allowed us, no wudu and no taking off the shoes, I tell you, 100% will pray five times a day. It's the wudu. He said, no, we have to take it off and make wudu and take off the shoes and your socks and all that. He said, then we put it off for next time, tomorrow, inshallah. This is it, weakness, human weakness. Shoes, taking off the socks, all that. So we're making the non-Muslim, please take off your shoes. And because it's a type of inconvenience, we know it's an inconvenience, we are causing them. So he said, do you know why you're taking off your shoes? The answer is always no. Would you like to know? Nobody ever says he doesn't want to know. You see, it's the nature of man, he wants to know why. We are all inquisitive, we want to know why. We say, you remember? When Moses was on Mount Sinai, God spoke to him and he said, so saying, we quote from the Christian Bible, which is common to both the Jews and the Christians. That portion, which is common to them both. And God said, and he said, draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place where thou standest is holy ground. You see, in respect of that commandment, we Muslims, we take off our shoes. We are not discriminating against you, because as you see, and we show them, we also take off our shoes when we enter this house of prayer. You leave no scope for arguments. Instead of telling the man, telling the people, the old-fashioned way, my father used to do. He says, you know, you people, you go to the lavatory, the toilet with the shoes, same shoes, you go to the church, you got no respect for the house of God, but we are a nice, clean people. Look, it is so, but it's creating offense. But what we do now, he says, no, 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 there's so many ways of killing a cat. We say in Urdu, You kill the snake without breaking the stick. In other words, you teach the man without creating offense. So we are only following in the footsteps of your prophets. Whatever God commanded your prophets in your own books to do, we are following them. No arguments. No arguments. I says, you know, before we go into pray, we make ablution, wudu. All the exposed parts of the body are being washed. The hands, the feet, the nostrils, the nape of the neck, gargling the mouth, brushing the teeth. I said, this the Muslim does five times a day, every day of the year. The one who is particular with his prayers. And purely from the hygienic point of view, no one is going to find fault with the person who washes himself five times a day. It's a good hygienic practice. And they all agree. It's a good hygienic practice. I say it also serves certain psychological purposes. Meaning, mentally it's preparing the person for prayer. I say we are not washing because we are dirty. We are washing because we are going to face our Lord. We are going to stand before our Maker. So psychologically, mentally, we are being prepared. Now I am telling you all this, not for entertainment. I am telling you this as a look, this is what can be done, how you can exploit the situation, how you can make use of the masjids, the massages in the West, and even in the East. I will tell you how you can use them here as well, the same technique, how the masjid, how it can serve in Dawa work. I said, thirdly, secondly, psychological, thirdly, I said, this is also another commandment given by God Almighty to the Holy Prophet Moses. In the book of Exodus, that is the second book of the Bible. This is the Christian Bible. In the second book of this Bible, it is written. 
and Moses and Aaron and the sons washed their hands and the feet thereat. When they went into the tent of the congregation, they washed as the Lord commanded Moses. I say, in respect of that commandment, we do all these things. We wash ourselves. This is what Moses did, and this is what Aaron and the son, the children, they all did. They washed, means they made wudu before going into the house of prayer. We do the same. No arguments. Look, hygienically it's a good thing, psychologically it's a good thing, and thirdly, this is a fulfillment of the teachings of your prophets in your own book. Now, we say, we will go, this is all done, outside. We have a pool for making wudu, we taps right round. And on one of the seats we stand up and explain. Now, they are ready to go inside, in the masjid. So this is come, we will now go into the main house of prayer, and I will demonstrate to you how we pray. Now they think they're going to see something nice and funny. You'll demonstrate. Maybe you do the dance of the dervishes or something of the kind, you know, do something funny. Mm -hmm. And they are, they are looking forward to it. We will now demonstrate to you how we pray. So we get them in the masjid, make them to sit behind against the wall. I said, sit against the wall, be comfortable, rest. I said, the walls are air-conditioned. Just a joke. They're not air-conditioned. As it's nice and cooling, sit down on the ground, on the carpet, is an experience of a lifetime you will never forget, and that is true, they'll never forget. Sit down on the carpet. You don't talk to them, taking them around and, you know, this is the masjid and this is the mihrab. No, 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 sit down. Because once a man sits down, it's hard for him to get up in a hurry. Yes, sit down, relaxed. So now, from there, South Africa, I'm talking to them sitting against the wall. From there our masjids are facing north, because we are the south. So we are facing north. So we say, as you are seated here, you are all facing north. And every mosque in South Africa, they face north. You know why? Because Mecca is to the north of South Africa. But if you go to the east, you'll find all the mosques are facing west. From the western countries, they're all facing east. And from the north, they are facing south. It is quite a queer arrangement. Funny arrangement. As so each facing the other. It is funny. You facing this side, the other fellow facing you. And the other one's facing this side. It's quite a queer arrangement. It is queer. But I says, you know, why? I say, all the attention of the Muslim world focus on to one spot, Mecca, to symbolize the unity of the Muslim people, that they have a common direction of prayer. Not, not that God is there, because the Holy Quran tells us, وَلِلَّهِ الْمَشْرِكُ وَالْمَغْرِبِ To Allah belongs the East and the West. فَأَيْنَ In whichever way you turn is the presence of Allah. In other words, God Almighty is omnipresent. He's present everywhere. Whether you look up, or you look down, or you look sideways. He's everywhere. This only symbolizes our unity. Facing in that direction, we say, Allahu Akbar, meaning Allah is the greatest. We signify that we divorce ourselves from all earthly things, and we will solely contemplate on God. So saying, we read chapters and verses from the Holy Quran celebrating the praises of God. And we go into different postures. And in every posture, we celebrate His praises. Then we demonstrate. Say so from this position, we go into what you call ruku, a semi-bent position. And in that position we say, Subhana Rabbil Azim, Subhana Rabbil Azim, Subhana Rabbil Azim. Glory to God the Great, glory to God the Great, glory to God the Great. From there we arise, saying, Samiyallahu liman hamida, we 